Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Good morning, everybody. It's Saturday morning. It's about 7.30. And uh, just in the backyard, uh, putting some final touches up, some finishing touches here. We're getting ready to open the back garden here, hopefully on Tuesday uh, for dining as, as this part of New York as the Hudson Valley enters phase two. Phase two will allow restaurants to have you sit in our outdoor space. The only regions right now are the seven upstate regions that are allowing that. So Rochester, Buffalo, Syracuse, um, Albany, uh, up further from that, Glens Falls. Those, those seven regions across that band are allowing right now, they went into it on Thursday into it. Um, and Hudson Valley starts, um, starts Tuesday. Hopefully, if the governor gives us the okay, we can start Tuesday here in the Hudson Valley. We can go to your favorite restaurant. And as long as they have outdoor seating, you can. And, um, sit outside as long as they're doing that. So that's the situation with that. It's not legal yet. They're, uh, and of course, who knows when it's going to be legal in New York City, but so hopefully the Hudson Valley will, uh, everything will go off uh, well on Tuesday. So I've been here working all week in the garden to rearrange things because um, when we do open back here, we have to be socially distanced. So each table has to be six feet apart. Uh, so I had to make more room back here to accommodate more to make my tables. But prior to that, the tables were not six feet apart. They were three feet apart, um, a chair, chair to chair. So I'm going to give a quick little tour of what I've done back here in the garden. I've been working, uh, I've been working all week and one or two small things left. Uh, one of the things that I want to get done before we open on Tuesday is fix the fence. So I need to put uh, new fencing sections up there. So hopefully we'll get that done by Tuesday. But if not, um, all the saute pans are there, and I'll probably just fix some of those those pickets that are missing there in the meantime. Uh, but let me give you a little tour of the back here because we did we did some improvements in the backyard here, uh, some um, some seating improvements, some garden improvements, and we built a water. I, I built a waterfall this week. I built a little pond and waterfall, which is super exciting. So if you've never been to our backyard, this is our, this is our fire pit. This is our fire pit that's been here for, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. And um, we've been burning this a lot this year. Uh, we started early in the year. I mean, I remember it was February this year. It was a mild winter. We had this thing going. Um, not many people come out here at that time of the year. Uh, but people did ask us early in the season uh, to get that going. And uh, we, we had it going. So that's the fire pit. One of... Um, one of my cooks built this. People always ask. One of my cooks uh, built this uh, when he was working for me in the kitchen. He did stonework. So he uh, whipped this out in a few days. In about a week, it took him to do this. So uh, there's a garden over there, which was, I'll show you what I've done to that. I did a little Facebook Live on this yesterday, but you know, now's the best time to, to get this in here. And I have everything cleaned up really nice. So, all right. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at the back here. Got a good view. So... Justin and I are actually riding bikes this morning, um, so our bikes are ready to go. So here's the back door of the restaurant, and this is the parking lot entrance of the restaurant. So when you walk in to the back here, um, this is what you would see. And we've done a lot of private parties back here, lots and lots of private parties, baby showers. We've even done weddings back here and all kinds of events. So my bike rack is out to put on the car today to take the bikes. We're going up to the Ashokan. So here's the fire pit. So as you see, I have some tables. I've never had a table there before. I had, we had to put that table there. Um, I got to move that table over a little bit because I'm a little shy. So good morning, everybody who's tuning on. Um, Deb, Candice, Christina, Joanna, Jamie's on, Barbara, Michael's on. So good morning, everybody uh, who's tuning in. Drop a comment, hashtag live. If you're watching this live, um, hi, Sean. Sean just came on. Or hashtag replay if it's on the replay. If you've been back here, drop a comment. Say yes, fire pit. If you've been back to our fire pit before. So we've always had the tent. The tent's been up. Um, we put that up every April 1st, the tent. Uh, good morning, Tamara. We put that up every uh, April 1st. And we take it down by November 1st. So that's the tent that we have up. It's a 20 by 20 tent. And we usually pack all the tables underneath the tent. And we really don't put any out in throughout the garden. So now um, we've spread them out through the garden. So there's the round, round table there and you walk in the left-hand side. I put some tables around the fire pit. I just have to take some measurements and make sure that we're six feet. Um, I do some cooking over here. 
So I have a grill over there that will flip out and put over here, which I'm going to get ready and um, and bring that out because we're gonna be doing a lot, a lot more cooking out here this uh, this this summer. I have more burners coming uh, to uh, to also cook out here. I ordered some really high powerful burners. So here's the tent, and here's all the tables spread out. So we have four tables under the tent right now, as opposed to eight tables underneath the tent. So that's how far we spread it out. Now, if you remember the garden here, if you sat by the fire pit, you turned right around and there was the guard, there was actually garden beds all through here. We we'll have to get more pea pebbles maybe this week, hopefully. So this used, this used to all be garden spot right in there. And we just moved it over. We just slid it over, got some stacking pavers, built a little wall there. Got our kale growing, so now you can sit like right on top of the garden when you're on this table here. Got some basil, lots of herbs, some kale growing. Decorative squash is growing in there. It was a volunteer from last year. There's all of our mint. So, and good morning. Hi, Scott. Sabrina's on. Lynn is on. Um, Danielle's on. Good morning, Danielle. Julia. Hi, Julia from Woodburn. So, all right. So. I put a little bench over here. People love this bench already. I just did this yesterday, and we had some people that were waiting for their food to uh, to get ready who uh, came out and took a look. And they go, we want to sit there. And I'm like, really? The bench? That was just like an afterthought. And they're like, no, no, the bench is great. So these rocks are going to go over to the waterfall. Let me show you the waterfall that I built. So here's the here's the the waterfall that and pond that I built the last three days. I've been working around the clock and there's many, many trips to pick up all those pavers. I picked up most of those pavers in the van, those stackable pavers. So I built a waterfall here, got some plants in here. Some fish will be coming in very soon. I'm gonna get some from Courtney's house. Courtney has two ponds with lots of fish in it that were my parents. So I dug up some plants that were there. We got the cascading waterfall. I have a leak in the top somewhere. Not really a leak, but it's being, it's not being, when I moved the rocks around yesterday, kind of pushed it off the edge. So I got to go in there later and make sure that um, I can fix that and put a rooster in there. If you can see the rooster, that was my mom's rooster. It's a metal rooster. It's not a real rooster. Courtney's the one with the real chickens at home. So I have a bench here too. You can sit down here. There's a bench there. You can sit down there. And check out the waterfall there. There's a light inside there. Uh, spotlight goes on, a solar-powered spotlight. Lights up the, uh, the cascade. So that's the tour of the back garden right now. It's all cleaned up, ready to go. If we were open, if, if we were ready to rock and roll with the governor, we could seat you out here today. But we have to wait until Tuesday, folks. Um, Christy's on. Hi, Christy. James is on. Looks beautiful. So... Yeah, so we've been, you know, when this first, when this whole thing first went down in March, like I came back here in the middle of March and I cleaned up the garden and I was like, okay, you know, I need this garden clean, got to think positive um, because, you know, we don't know how long is this going to last, it's going to last two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, we had no idea what was going to happen at first. So I got back here and I cleaned up, I did spring clean up, got it really good and I was like, okay, people need to sit out here, if we can let people sit out here legally, it's ready to rock and roll. And then, of course, as this progressed and progressed, I said, you know what, we obviously need to make more room for dining, uh, more space for dining. And then, of course, when they when they were getting ready to to do the phase announcements and um, and they opened we were opening upstate, I said, I've got to get on this back here. So that prompted massive action here last week to uh, make this ready to rock and roll. We have two seats in the front of the restaurant, two tables in the front of the restaurant that are socially distanced, and there'll be tables on the side of the building. That will be socially distanced. I've been told by the village that they will forego um, the open container law in town here. That They won't enforce the open container law. So if you want to be able to sit out in the parking lot, because um, a lot of people are going to be nervous about actually coming into a restaurant. A lot of people, hi, Gail. Yep, Gail, they were waiting for their food last night. They took a, a, uh, a uh, walk around the garden here while they were waiting for their food to be finished. There are two burgers. Hope you enjoy those burgers, Gail. So um, the village is going to forego the open container law. They, um, they understand that restaurants are very hard hit by this 
And let's face it, at 25 or even 50% occupancy, restaurants just aren't going to make it financially. Uh, there's a lot of overhead and um, expenses that go into restaurants, uh, labor, food, the rent, all this stuff, uh, your mortgage or rent payment, that a lot of restaurants won't make it with 50%. So this is not the saving grace for restaurants, folks, being them to be able to 50%. So it's a couple guidelines. I, I, I talked about this yesterday in the Facebook Live yesterday morning. A couple guidelines when you go out to eat. Um, understand that a lot of restaurants, I was reading last night online in one of the groups, that a lot of restaurants are all of a sudden taking their parking lots and throwing up tents. They're, um, they're putting spaces in outside that they normally would not be serving uh, outside. So this is new for a lot of restaurants. And we've served back here many times. We've had parties back here many times. I'm going to be doing cooking back here. So this is nothing new for us back here. But some restaurants, it's all brand new for them serving outside like they're serving their parking lot. So just be patient with restaurants like that. Don't don't go in and think you're going to get the regular service that you got before this happened because this is a lot of new systems for a lot of new restaurants. So please, please be patient on, on our fellow restaurant tour friends. Um, uh, we all, we all, we all need the support right now. All of us need the support. Um, also be conscious of other people want to eat as well. So um, kindly don't linger at tables. If you're done eating, um, you might not have been out for a long time. Like Jamie and I were talking like today, like, where are we going to go eat this week? Like Wednesday night we're off. Like, where do we go eat? Like, we're super excited about this probably just as much as a lot of other people are. And some people don't want to go out and they won't go out. They'll continue to take out food, they'll sit in the car, they'll take it home, which is perfectly fine, perfectly fine. Everybody has different comfort levels. But a lot of people are gonna want to go out and they're like, and just, so it helps the restaurant financially, and this is any restaurant, not just mine, any restaurant. Just just be aware that, hey, if, you, if you're if you done eating, um, right now is not the time to be lingering because that restaurant could use a turn on the table and use make more revenue. So, and a lot of other people will be waiting to occupy these tables a lot of restaurants are going to be limited with the amount of people we're all limited with the amount of people we can serve so just be fair and think about that for everybody else not just for the restaurant but for the also because you would probably if you're anxious to go out you're and you're sitting there waiting in line and looking well what's that table doing they're done eating they ate their dessert <laughs> what's that so jamie's yelling out the window to me so um You'd be like, well, that table finished dessert 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. They're just sitting there and talking. Why aren't they moving? You'd probably be that person like questioning these people. So um, be kind, um, considerate of other people. Once we're back to whatever kind of normal we can get, there'll be plenty of tables for everybody at all these restaurants, hopefully. That's the plan. Or restaurants will modify or something and figure it out. So back here, we got these really cool bamboo plates. So what will happen is you'll go inside order your food. We're not going to have full service out here, uh, at least to begin with, not full service. You're going to order your food still. Uh, you can pick it up at the bar or we'll bring it out to you. We'll have a garbage can out here, but we, a lot of people are uncomfortable with, with wait staff on top of them. We've heard this from a lot of people that, you know, they just want to eat. They want to be outside. They want to be left alone. So we're not going to have the wait staff on top of you. Call ahead. Jamie's really on the window. Call ahead. So She's actually inside painting, painting one of the raid heaters this morning. She, she's listening to my live. I think she has the phone on inside. Um, so um, you order your food. We'll either come, bring, we'll come drop it off to you out here or you pick it up at the bar. We give you bamboo plates. It'll be in to-go containers. It'll be disposable. Wine glasses will be real, uh, but we have disposable everything. Nice bamboo, eco-friendly, all that kind of stuff. So that is how we're gonna start, that's how we're going to transition into the beginning of this. Uh, is that, that that is how we're going to transition. Our, our new menu is rocking and rolling. Uh, it's a tapas style menu. It is, um, all the sides are separate. We lowered prices a lot. So even if you order sides, you're still going to come out ahead. Um, there are no more courses, so there's no more, no, no more entrees, appetizers, soups. It's all, you order it and it comes out when it's ready. We needed to alleviate a little bit of labor in the kitchen, and that's the way we do it. So we have one less person working in the kitchen. Everybody's not on top of each other. It's safer for everybody. So that was our answer for that, and so be patient with us when that happens. We'd love for you to call your order in ahead of time still. We'd love for you to call your order in ahead of time because, and actually the recommendations from the government, from the state government, from, the, the, from Cuomo are saying that restaurants need to take reservations and not, not, not encourage walk-ins. That's one of the recommendations. Um, we probably know it's hard to do that. A lot of you are calling in right now just because that's the situation. So if you can call your order in, please call your order in. Uh, that would be fantastic. We're still going to be doing our groceries. Our grocery store will still be up and running inside. We can still take pre-orders and stuff. We'll still be doing steaks, salmon. All that kind of stuff is happening. It's going to be happening. We're still doing that. We're still going to be giving away free ionized water. 
we're still going to be giving away free gloves. So even if you come in and sit down and eat and you want to leave, when, when you leave, take a handful of gloves. We're still giving out free gloves. We're still giving out free ionized water. We're going to adjust the prices a little bit on wine because like our wine bottle, it's $9.99. We make like three bucks in that bottle of wine. We make literally make $3. It's a loss leader. It's, it's something to bring people in and keep volume up. And you get a bottle of wine, you get other things, you get food. So it's been one of those things. We will not be able to give deliver that wine to you out here when you're in our seats for $9.99. It's just, it, it won't work financially. I had still have to pay. I If I sold a thousand bottles a year at $9.99, a thousand bottles a year at $9.99, people sitting down, all right? That's a thousand bottles. That's three a day. Um, I'd be making $9. That doesn't cover the fee to the state for my liquor license. So that was just a price so you could take out and enjoy at home. We brought it down to liquor store pricing, all of our wines. If you're gonna be sitting down here for the time being, we're just gonna add $10 a bottle is what we start with. So $9.99 wine will turn to $19.99, which is still an amazing deal. You can get a bottle of wine here for 25 bucks, um, which is an amazing bottle of wine uh, to sit and enjoy. Uh, and a lot of, most of our wines are priced at $14.99. So $24.99, you get an awesome bottle of wine still at a restaurant. Um, I don't know any kind of deal like that. All the wines, most the majority of the wines that we buy are win winers that we've actually been to. We got this new one in last night from um, Apulia, from Anduria, uh, from our, our favorite winery, one of our favorite wineries down there. And they uh, have done a, uh, a white, this beautiful white in this co-op that, that we just absolutely love. And that is here. So literally $24 uh, gets you that pot, $25 gets you that bottle of wine. Next week, we have some wine from Spain coming from Monstant. Uh, from uh, two two really amazing wineries that we visited two years ago, Val Diopes, which has an amazing, amazing, amazing story. Um, the guy who owns it, the family who owns it now, they were literally royalty in the 13th and 14th and 15th century. They owned half of a quarter. Of, it was insane how much land they actually owned in um, that Barcelona area. I mean, they owned everything. And, and when the Industrial Revolution hit, uh, the family didn't know how to make money. The family only, they would, they, they strategically married in. He, the, 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 the owner explains that he goes, we strategically married for centuries to build our wealth and build our land. And when the Industrial Revolution hit, none of my family, he goes, knew how to make money. They just knew how to marry into wealth. Well, what happened with the Industrial Revolution was, he goes, my family kept spending money and spending money and spending more money because there were more goods available. And slowly by slowly, they had to sell off land and sell off land to maintain their, maintain their lifestyle. And he goes, that equation... Um, broke down a hundred years ago and um, we now have only like 600 acres and a beautiful mountaintop and and literally literally they have he has a museum in Val de Opes in the um, in the winery there of of copies of letters written like from the 14th 15th century from the king of France the king of Spain um, because uh, the family was um, was royal basically royalty and the museum in town is all about them a really really amazing winery um, but very humble Humble individual now, and and uh, uh, and really amazing. So we're bringing in that. We have another winery coming in from up on the top of the mountain in Mondstadt, which Jamie and I had to drive up this four mile road, one way road, uh, smaller one way road in Spain to get up to the mountaintop to this one winery. And the owners explained to us that when it rains, when they start the rain start coming in, they have to race down the mountain because all the roads flood in a lot of spots. And you won't once you're stuck on the mountain after a rainstorm, you're stuck. So he goes, we're sitting here working at one o'clock and. Things are rocking and rolling. We're working. All of a sudden, you hear the weather forecast and the clouds are coming in. He goes, we shut down because if you're not off the mountain, you're not going to get off the mountain. So that, that, that wine, we have a Grenache coming in from them. Uh, Val Diops is a Zerillo, which is what they make Prosecco with. It's going to be a still wine. So all of our wines, folks, the majority of our wines are wineries that Jamie and I have personally been to and that we um, have met the owners. These are wineries that we take uh, our guests to. These are just some amazing, amazing wineries. So if they get that experience of, a, of great stories inside these bottles of wine for $25 is an amazing deal. So that's our plan for that. Just $10 more, you add it on, you come back here and enjoy. And you'll get a real wine in the glass with that. Anything else, Jamie? Um, no, I think you covered it. Okay. My my uh, help. Cues, yeah. Hello, everybody. What are you doing this morning? Walking, I'm running? I'm walking, and then I'm going to come do a, a ride um, oh. on the, my spin bike. On your spin bike. Okay, good. I'm loving that spin bike. <laughs> Justin, when are we leaving? Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> I got to eat an avocado before we leave. So one more view here, folks, of the waterfall. That's the pond and waterfall I built this week. This is... Um, I'm pretty proud of myself for this. A lot of people that I've shown pictures to are like, you didn't build that, and I did build it. 
um, I'm not that um, inclined when it comes to this kind of work, but I figured it out. It was, was, was easier than I thought. So uh, it was a little intimidating at first, and once I got started, I said, oh, this is how this works. So that's the, that's the uh, waterfall in the pond out here. Little span of outside. Michael just commented, Michael Davidson. Oh yeah, we're doing this event tonight. Thanks for commenting, Michael. We're doing this great event tonight. 25 bucks, two cocktails. You come here and get the kits. It includes Prosecco, the Black Infusion uh, Vodka, their Apricot, and their Fig. We give you all the ingredients. You go home, you make the cocktails. Michael, the owner of Black Infusions, is gonna be on the call tonight. We have music on tonight. And um, some Susan, who's on right now, uh, she was on one of the um, um, last week, or a couple, one of our last ones. Hi, Lewis. Lewis Landon's on uh, from tuning in from out west, I assume. So, uh, hi, Lewis. Been following some of your music. Lewis used to be a, uh, a local resident here in Sullivan County, amazing musician. Uh, he used to play here at the restaurant. He lives out, in, I think, Utah now, Colorado, Utah. I'm not really sure. But if you go on his Facebook, you'll see some of his great music that he plays. Um, he's been playing throughout this coronavirus uh, pandemic. So thanks, Lewis, for tuning in. Um, and maybe it would be fun if, Lou, if we could get Lewis to play um, on, our, on our, one of our uh, hangouts, virtual hangouts one time. So, um, but folks, we'll be back to some kind of normal here where we'll be having musicians back in the garden here like Brian Gordon, Albie, uh, Chris Jackson, Anthony Manella will be back. Um, a lot of musicians will be back. Uh, Eric Knight, the jazz beast, uh, or the sax beast will be, he'll be, he'll be rocking and rolling back here too. So that's cool. So we're going to have musicians back here playing, uh, so that's it, folks. I got to go. Justin's waiting for me. We're going on a bike ride, 30, 35 miles around the show can today, this morning. And I got to get a quick bite to eat and get some more water. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon. If you want to partake tonight's virtual hangout and rocket virtual, our, our virtual hangout uh, cocktail and rock and roll virtual hangout, $25. Come and get your kits. Uh, the you mean buy bottles of the black infusion stuff, uh, the apricot and the fig, really amazing stuff. We'll give you a taste of it. If we give you a taste of it when you come in, you're going to be like, I'll take the whole bottle. That's just what's going to happen. I, I guarantee you that it's amazing stuff. The, Jamie's going to make a couple cocktails. Michael's going to talk about how to make more cocktails with it. So the apricot spritz is going to happen tonight. I'm really excited about that. And, um, that's it folks. Got to get rocking and rolling. And I'm going to go for a bike ride, and I will um, reach out to you in a bit, Michael, and we'll uh, finish up some details. i got to create the Zoom link and all that kind of stuff. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And uh, another quick span of the back garden. Been working here all week to make sure that we have socially distanced and ready to go for Tuesday. Tuesday in the Hudson Valley, this is the big news. Tuesday, if the governor says Tuesday in the Hudson Valley, you will be allowed to go into your re favorite restaurant as long as you're doing outdoor dining, and you'll be able to sit Starting this Tuesday, the law did not change here this week. A lot of restaurants were confused. A lot of people were confused. It did not change. We're not seating people out here until Tuesday. It's not worth taking the chance. Restaurants have gotten reported. They've lost. They've been in trouble with the liquor authority. And it, folks, this thing is so crazy that on the website for, for the state, you can actually go and report people for breaking laws right now. You can actually go in and report. So if you know somebody that's open for business, shouldn't be open, um, whether they're a restaurant, a florist, a barber shop, it's, 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 it's insane. You can go on and like report these businesses for breaking the law or, or the mandates. Um, and it's insanity. So we've not taken that chance. Dwayne is saying it's stupid. It's so stupid. Um, we could have, you could have been sitting back here two, three weeks ago, socially distanced, because a lot of you are, especially in New York City, they're all buying food at the restaurants and they walk out in front of the restaurant and hang out on the street. And they're all there and there's, there's no proper seating for them. They're not socially distanced. It's actually worse off instead of letting these restaurants say, okay, yeah, go ahead and, and um, sit on our sidewalk, socially distanced. So, and, it's, and, and then to be able to report other businesses, insane. So we've not taken the chance of letting people, um, people out uh, in our, and eating here. We give tours of this. Uh, like Gail said last night, she was waiting for their food and they walked out back here and took a tour of this. So we're, we're giving tours of this. You can come take a look at it. Um, so that's awesome. But we cannot legally sit back here yet until Tuesday. Tuesday, fingers crossed, phase two in, uh, in Hudson Valley. All right, that's it, folks. Talk to you later.